That's uh, a bold choice, my friend. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, welcome back to Gen 7 Monotype Pokemon Battles. Oh yes, you can see behind me we've got a Monotype Fighting Team today, which is uh, not such a common type, I'd say it's probably 6th uh, or 7th as far as all the types go in, uh, in how often I see it. There really should be a chart or something for uh, how common each Monotype is. But uh, I don't see fighting that often, so I decided to make one, see how it goes. It's one of the most hyper-offensive types. There's really not a whole lot else you can do from it. You've got some uh, bulky pokes like Hariyama and stuff, but even Hariyama is basically just going to uh, be a guts abuser and poison himself with a toxic orb, come out with a facade, and try and make some fucking huge hits. So that is uh, the name of the game for the fighting types. We are basically just going to try and sweep our opponent under the rug, and I basically expect it to be either in our favor very quickly or not in our favor very quickly. <laughs> so we'll have to see how it goes. Let's get into the team. Uh, we've got Mian Chao as the lead with a Choice Scarf. He's also got the Regenerator ability. Obviously, my last team, Toxapex, had Regenerator. It is one of the best abilities that you can have. Um, it's going to be hard for the opponent to catch up with Mian Chao because he's got um, plus attack and speed EVs, and then he's also got a Jolly Nature, which will boost his speed even more. And if anything does manage to touch him, uh, you just switch out, Regenerator takes effect, and you hopefully heal all that damage off. So he's got High Jump Kick, U-Turn, Poison Jab, and Knock Off. Uh, poison Jab, obviously, to get rid of those fairy types, which are a very, very big threat. Um, you've also got Flying types, which basically every fighting type has access to, to a rock move. Um, so I didn't pack Mian Shao with a rock move, but there are plenty of things here that are able to counter uh, Flying types. And then you've also got the Psychic types, and I do have two Pokemon which will uh, be immune to Psychic type abilities. Um, so I'm not too worried. I think my team's relatively well built for any threat that it may come across. Uh, Mian Shao is just a great, great lead Pokemon, and I'm definitely glad to have him on the team. So next Pokemon up, we've got Lucario, a Fighting and Steel type. That is going to uh, take neutral hits from uh, any Psychic and Fairy types, so obviously he's a really, really good pick. Um, I think he also takes neutral hits from Flying types, too. Yeah, so... All the things that fighting is weak to, he has a resistance in the steel type, so obviously a natural choice for any monotype fighting team. I've given him choice specs, um, his ability is inner focus, which is kind of inconsequential, but uh, choice specs is interesting because uh, I don't really have too many special attackers on this team. Obviously fighting is a pretty physical type, um, but luckily you do have Lucario with... Uh, the ability to run either a special or physical moveset. I've chosen the special in this case. Uh, we've got Aura Sphere, Dark Pulse, Flash Cannon, and then Dragon Pulse is kind of just a throwaway move that I don't see myself ever using. But it's there if we need it, if some, uh, if some Dragon Monotypes pop up, which uh, I see relatively often. Dragon's a pretty good type, uh, although not so much again with Fairy. Fairy kind of changed up the whole metagame. Um, but we've got Flash Cannon, just in case we do run across those fairy types. So overall, Lucario, extremely well built. I do see myself using probably Dark Pulse and Aura Sphere more than anything else. Um, but yeah, glad to have him on the team because of those resistances. Third Pokemon, halfway through the team, we've got Scrafty. Uh, he's got Leftovers and the Shed Skin ability uh, for his moves. We've got Bulk Up, Rest, Sleep Talk, and Crunch. So, he's basically here to take care of any Psychic types that may uh, run through the rest of my team. Uh, with Shed Skin and Rest, it's a really, really interesting combo. Um, you can use Rest, heal all the way back up, and then you've got like a 20% chance to wake up on the exact same turn. So, it's a really, really nice free heal. Keeps Scrafty in the, uh, in the game ex for a really good long time. And then you've got the uh, Sleep Talk. So hopefully you'll either be bulking up or crunching as you're sleeping, which is a super nice combo. Um, crunch, probably a questionable move. I thought about putting Drain Punch or getting rid of Sleep Talk for Drain Punch, um, because that is a really nice way to keep him even more healed. 
Um, however, I didn't find it that necessary. He is mostly here to take care of the uh, the psychic types that we might see in the fights. So, um, although he only has one purpose, he serves it extremely well. Nothing's going to be able to hurt him that much. Um, even if the psychic type has focus blast or something like that, he will take super effective damage. But his HP and special defense are as such that he will be able to uh, live through at least one of them. And then hopefully the second one will miss and then... You'll, you'll be able to get your crunches in. So, um, a lot of HP and attack investment in this guy. I probably should have done a little more special defense, uh, but I couldn't decide what to take that out of. <laughs> it would probably come out of HP, um, but yeah. It just makes him a little more squishy, which is something that I don't want. I, w I do want him to be able to weather hits, whether they are defensive or, or physically or specially offensive. Right. <laughs> The, the next Pokemon we have to uh, weather through the Psychic types is Pangoro, again, another Dark and Fighting type. Pangoro is built a little bit differently, obviously. We have the Assault Vest, which increases his special defense, which is quite poor, uh, naturally. But he does have a really, really nice HP stat. So Assault Vest will increase special defense by 30%, while you can only use uh, attacking moves. So. There will be no rest or sleep talk or any of that for Pangoro. Instead, we've given him uh, the ability Iron Fist, which powers up punching moves by 20%. And then we've given him a bunch of punching moves, obviously. So, Power Up Punch, Drain Punch, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch. Um, it's a really, really interesting moveset. You basically start out with Power Up Punch, which will give you a 50% attack boost. And then you can start Drain Punching if you've taken uh, some big hits. You can Fire Punch... Uh, and Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch mostly there for the flying types. Fire Punch is there uh, just as a nice coverage move. Fire works against a lot, a lot of stuff. So, uh, Pangoro, I haven't um, necessarily found him e exceedingly useful or anything like that. Maybe he would be better replaced with a, a Hitmonlee or something. Hitmonlee with Unburden is just fucking insane. Um, but overall, I, I like to pad my team just a little bit with that resistance to the Psychic type, because if you are playing Monotypes, uh, yeah, it's it's difficult to take down a team of six Psychic Pokemon with a, a team of Fighting types, especially if you only have one immunity to it. So I've decided to pack Pangoro in there for a second immunity, and uh, hopefully that will help us, <laughs> help us to overcome some of the threats that we might come across. Uh, but overall, I really do like the fact that he has Drain Punch. He doesn't necessarily need to have Rest uh, like Scrafty does. Uh, so, two Pokemon that uh, are supposed to be really, really tanky, but they tank in extremely different ways, which I think is really, really nice. Um, as for the fifth Pokemon on the team, Halucha. Oh my god, what a fucking operator this guy is. Uh, he has a Citrus Berry for his item. He has Unburden for his ability. Acrobatic, Swords Dance, Poison Jab, Drain Punch. Um, basically, send him out, set up your Swords Dance. Uh, the opponent will probably hit you into uh, Citrus Berry range. Eat the Citrus Berry, and then Unburden is activated, and you basically double your speed as well. So double speed, double attack, and then you're basically just going to sweep through the opponent's team relatively easy, unless they have uh, something that can resist both flying and fighting. Which, there's not a whole lot. Um, yeah. Even Steel types, which... Uh, steel types aren't that much of a problem. Maybe maybe Fairy types, Ghost types, things that can resist uh, fighting and not be super affected by flying. But once you get Acrobatics uh, with, with same type attack bonus, once you lose your item, the power is doubled. Um, it starts out as 55 base power goes up to 110, and then add 50% more for same type attack bonus. So it is just a fucking huge attacking move, uh, almost on the level of Hydro Pump and things like that. So this is a really, really good move set for Halucha. Definitely one that I see a whole lot, and for good reason. Um, he's got plus attack, uh, adamant nature, instead of plus speed, because that unburden doubling his speed basically means that you're not going to need it. Um, he... If we approach any other uh, mono fighting type teams, this is going to be the guy that we go to in order to uh, basically get through anything. 
I would like to see maybe a bit more priority. Uh, mo mono fighting does have a lot of good priority moves, such as Fake Out. Um, but I didn't pack many uh, priority moves into this team simply because I think uh, we've got either the bulk or the speed to weather it and then come back and climb up and over the opponent. So Halucha, definitely one of the speedy ones, um, and we'll definitely see how he does. Uh, I remain highly hopeful. I've tried him in a few uh, OU matches, and he did his job relatively well. So we'll see how he does on the Mino fighting side, and uh, if he can live through a Psychic or Fairy-type ability, then I'm relatively sure he'll be able to come back and KO without a problem. Uh, final slot goes to Kamo O, which is a... It's a dragon and fighting type, which is really, really interesting. Introduced in this most recent generation. And um, dragon fighting is interesting because you're not um, four times weak to ice, as most dragons are, because... Most dragons are flying and dragon, or ground and dragon. Um, but we're starting to see more of these dragons that can eat an ice-type move. There's a, a normal... Drampa is a normal and uh, dragon type, so... I'm really grateful for that. Um, most of the dragons, if, if the opponent had Ice Shard, you go up against a mono ice team, they'll be able to just sweep you out the door. Um, but now we've got some dragons that don't necessarily... Uh, Take, take that much damage. Uh, I know Kamo o can at least take one hit. So we've given him a Lumberry, which will get rid of the confusion from Outrage. We've got Poison Jab, Earthquake, and then a boosting move in Autotomize. Um, interestingly enough, I didn't give him any speed EVs. Autotomize is basically there to uh, patch up his subpar speed, and then I can just pack the uh, extra extra H or EVs into uh, bulk. So he can be fast and bulky and extremely strong. If you actually want to overcome your opponent's speed, you'll probably need two autonomizes, but with the bulk, that's not really a problem to stack up. So um, Lumberry is a really good combination with Outrage, obviously. His ability Bulletproof is um, one of the new Gen 7 abilities that basically lets you dodge any projectile attacks. So the thing that comes to mind now is Bullet Seed, although there are quite a few more than that. Um, and, and it's really, really nice. Uh, a lot of times the opponent doesn't see it coming at all, because it is a new ability. Eventually people will get used to it and be like, oh, that thing has Bulletproof, I know what I can't use against it. But at the moment there's a, a long list of moves that need to be memorized to not use against Pokémon with Bulletproof. Um, I don't have it on hand currently, but I do hope that you'll look it up on Bulbapedia, and uh, I'm sure your mouth will be agape afterwards, because it is just a crazy, crazy ability. Lots of stuff gets resisted by it. Um, so, let's see how this monotype fighting does. Uh, I remain pretty hopeful. Hopefully we'll get a, a psychic type or fairy type team, um, and then we can really put it to the test, but uh, whatever we come across is probably gonna be just fine. I'm not too worried. Here we go. Okay, friends, we've come across another uh, fighting type team, which is really, really interesting. He's got an Infernape and a Polyrath, which are pretty good picks, in my opinion. Um, he leads off with that Infernape. I'm able to high jump kick the shit out of it, um, although it's probably not the best move that I could have gone for right off the bat, just in case the Infernape had Protect or something crazy like that. It works out relatively well. Uh, he hits me with the poison jab, but that's no problem. I'm scarfed into high jump kick, so I gotta switch out as he brings in his Poly Hulk, Poly Wrath, uh, which really would be an interesting choice for uh, my mono fighting team. But I didn't go elemental really. Mostly, I've got like a, a more defensive type build. He's able to uh, Kama O is able to eat that ice punch right up. It only does 35% and I go ahead and uh, boost my speed with Autonomize, and now I'm able to outspeed, get my Outrage on, and that is doing some nice damage at 62%. It's going to be a two-hit KO on his Polyrath, and I don't think it carries Aqua Jet, so it's not going to be able to uh, to snag the KO there, which is really, really nice. Um, again, priority moves, pretty important, but um, you don't often see it. So he brings in Tedmon Lee, the, the Hitmon Lee now, 
and my outrage is over, but I'm able to get rid of the confusion with the Lumberry. Uh, unfortunately, he's able to KO my Kama O with a Blaze Kick, which relatively okay. Um, his hip only has a Focus Sash, which I find a little bit weird. I would have probably gone for like normal gem fake out, and then uh, you get Hitmonlee's unburdened boost, and you haven't taken a, a huge hit <laughs> that basically devastates your life. Uh, Mian Chao is able to switch in, outspeed the Hitmonlee with his Choice Scarf, and a U-turn will KO. I go into Scrafty now because I'm, I'm basically um, not gonna find a use for him in this fight. Uh, we basically got a bunch of mono fighting types, and uh, yeah, I, I packed my team with two dark types, which aren't going to see much use at all in this fight, I do suppose. So, he hits me with an Aura Sphere as I go for bulk up, and then um, I was going to try and crunch him, but he gets the flinch with Dark Pulse, and then he's definitely going to come back in Aura Sphere again to get the KO. So, maybe I should have just gone for crunch. I'm not sure if... Uh, Lucario has Justified or something like that. Um, that's the move that increases his attack every time he's hit with a dark type move. But he seems to be a special attacker as well. Uh, my Lucario is able to outspeed. Uh, I don't know if he didn't have full speed investment or what, but maybe I won the speed tie, was able to KO with the Aura Sphere. That's really, really nice. He brings in his Hitmonchan now. Um, I don't know what that thing's going to be able to do. Oh yeah, Drain Punch. <laughs> so the Aura Sphere does good damage, but he heals basically all of it back with the Drain Punch. Um, that is a really powerful move. I'm, I'm extremely, extremely surprised by it every time I see it. So he hits Pangoro now with a Thunder Punch, which gets the Paralyze. Not a problem there. Um, basically, we're, we're going to go for the Power Up Punch. Pangoro's pretty slow anyways. Go for the Drain Punch next, but he goes for the Drain Punch of his own and uh, is basically able to heal himself back to full health. So we are in a little bit of trouble now. This Hitmonchan has uh, proven his worth, so I'm going to go into my Operator now, Halucha. Get that Sword Stance going. He's probably going to hit with the Thunder Punch, which we saw before. There it is. Not quite enough to KO, uh, but it will be enough to get me my Citrus Berry, and now Acrobatics is going to eat this fucking thing alive. Baboosh! Really, really good uh, performance by the Hitmonchan, though. And his item is a Rocky Helmet, which is pretty interesting. Um, his final Pokemon, Hitmontop. I like how he had all the Hitmons on his team. That's uh, a bold choice, my friend. But uh, Hitmontop's not going to be able to take on the acrobatics from Halucha. So as I said, Halucha comes in here to clean up the game. And uh, really, really nice. Able to overcome a fellow mono fighting type. The Dojo Master would be so, so proud. <laughs> So friends, uh, I hope you've enjoyed. If you would do something a bit different with your mono fighting type team, let me know. I really do like how he had a Polyrath and an Infernape on his team. I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, if you would like to see another mono type, feel free to request in the comments and I will do my best to, uh, to make a stable team for it. Um, yeah, and your views, always appreciated. Likes, comments, subscriptions. I love it so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. This has been Gen 7 Fighting Monotype. I hope to see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye. See you again. Goodbye, goodbye. See you, my friends.